Hey all, welcome to the SimHanger channel. My name's Mark, thanks for watching and let's get started. And this is my 10 minute-ish summary of the highlights raised during the recent development Q&A between the community as Sobo and Microsoft. And the first item I want to bring to your attention wasn't even on the agenda, it came up in the Q&A session. But I consider it epic, it's significant news, it's the incorporation of NVIDIA's DLSS Deep Learning Super Sampling into Microsoft Flight Simulator in 2022. And why you may ask is this significant? Well in a nutshell it offers improved graphics and a massive performance boost. DLSS is a groundbreaking AI rendering technology that increases graphics performance using the dedicated tensor cores found on your RTX GPUs. To gain the benefit from this you will need an NVIDIA RTX graphics card, 20 or 30 series. DLSS is a proven technology and taps into the power of a deep learning neural network to boost FPS and generate sharp and crisp images, upscaled or not, into your sim. DLSS in Microsoft Flight Simulator is already under test and the results? Well they've been even better than they've expected. Better performance, better graphics and we ability to crank up those settings even further. Don't believe that's real? Well, here it is, from the horse's mouth as it were. Our next question in chat, and that is, um, do, do we have any clear direction or some of the uh, improvements that are coming to the X12 over the year? Yes. Yes, so um, basically we have, uh, we have been working on, a, on a, what we call here a separate branch where we've done do prototypes, tests, improvements. Mm -hmm. So we have done a, a, we have actually implemented DLSS uh, and prototyped it and uh, were very positively surprised by the, uh, it, it works basically much better than we thought. Um, it brings uh, basically either a, a, a big, big uh, quality uh, improvement or a big, big performance improvement with the same quality on the, on the GPU side, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, definitely we're going to bring that uh, to the X12. Uh, so basically what is happening is we are working on a branch uh, where we are basically improving the X12. It's going to have DLSS, it's going to have multi-screen optimizations. And uh, we, the team is trying to bring, so we're merging this into the main branch and then it's going to come out in a sim update. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working, hoping for uh, maybe 10, but maybe not, maybe if it slips. So that's currently our target, but it may be slipping later into the into the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think on the roadmap, you already said 22. You don't have a, we don't have exact date yet, but we're trying to get it into 10. But maybe it could be 11 or, or, or after. Um, but so yeah, DLSS is working. It's great, uh, great performance boost, especially at high resolutions, mm -hmm. and and other things are coming are coming with it. Who knows where this could lead? It could open up opportunities for things such as ray tracing in 2023 or 24. Unfortunately, no mention regarding AMD graphic cards and their technologies. Microsoft shared their roadmap with us and gave us an overview of what's to be expected in 2022, with some updates slotting in between the various world updates. World Update 7 and 8 will be covering during this summary, but World Update 7 is Australia and World Update 8 is Iberia, Spain and Portugal. They'll continue with their local legends, which started off with the Yunkers and will now be followed up with the Fokker F7. In terms of major releases, what was significant for me was the introduction of gliders and helicopters in the second and third quarters of 2022. A very welcome addition for many. World Update 7 comes to us at the end of January and will feature 94 points of interest all done by Orbix as well as 10 photogrammetry cities including Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane, Perth, Hobart and the list goes on. It'll include five landing challenges, six discovery flights and five bush trips.
Accompanying the world update will be the Fokker F7, the second in the Local Legend series. Charles Kingford Smith is probably the most famous Australian aviator, and in his day made headlines with his Southern Cross and all the various feats he achieved with it. Orbix, who are headquartered in Australia, have put this model together. The detail looks stunning. As announced previously, Microsoft intend on introducing a new line of famous flyer aircraft. This is aircraft that have a special place in history. The first one was to be the Antonov, but due to licensing issues this seems to have been delayed. So the first one we're likely to see is the Beechcraft Model 17 Staggerwing and is being brought to us by Caronado and timing wise is likely to be around the next sim update. We only got a few brief pictures of the aircraft as it's still in development, but it looks amazing. World Update 8, well we don't have a lot of details other than we know it's Siberia covering Spain and Portugal. It's planned to have a fine level of detail with 2 metre dem. 6 cities, 99 points of interest and 4 airports, the airports all being done by Gaia Simulations. And of course it'll have the normal array of discovery and landing challenges. Planned for release at the same time as the world updates to another local legend. It's a Dornier, and the first aircraft to do a transatlantic flight from Spain to South America. A few models still exist and they're being scanned for total accuracy. And the developer? Well it'll be the same person that brought us the Yunkers. Sebastian from Asobo gave us an update on some of the work being done on the flight model in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and much of it related to wind and airflow, and in particular to the impact of wind on the aircraft and all part of the road to helicopters in 2022. I'll leave a link to the full presentation which was done on Twitch in the notes below. In summary, he was highlighting work being done on fast-moving surfaces and the impact on the airframe, and is planned by Sim Update 8 that three aircraft will have these features. They're likely to be the King Air, the Cessna Citation CJ4, and the Piper Cub. The plan is to ultimately to bring it to all aircraft. Work is being done to create a more physical simulation of feathering the prop. A considerable amount of work is being done to simulate a more realistic p-factor created by torque, and further advances in the aerodynamics in terms of lift and drag, as well as being able to simulate a native or deep stall. And much of this will be good news for those that are keen on flying the turboprops. We're going to get a much more realistic experience, as in my opinion it's one of the weaker areas of the sim. Asopo will also be opening this up to all aircraft developers. They loosely covered some of the top areas and bugs, and Jorg acknowledged the number of issues being experienced by both PC and Xbox users is more than it should be. And Sim Update 9 once again is going to be primarily a bug fix, something sorely needed in my opinion. Whilst during the Q&A session they are able to answer some of the questions directly, some of the answers remain fairly loose and vague. Some of the areas where we did get some more detailed answers related to DX12, which we've already covered. Microsoft are employing somebody, and work will start in April on improving the AI traffic. They acknowledged it's simply not good enough. Multi-monitor support will be introduced in 2022, and improvements to real-time traffic will be in Sim Update 8. Yorgo's question with regards to where are we in supporting third-party developers of the more complex aircraft, PMDG a case in point. And they confirmed they continue to work with these developers and many of the roadblocks have now been resolved. And he remained confident that PMDG's Boeing line will make it into the sim in the not too distant future. Fixing live weather was an ongoing process, but not a lot of detail was given. 
For the Xbox platform, Jorg explained some of the difficulties with the more complex aircraft and the recent DC-6 being a case in point. And he confirmed that the DC-6, the Twin Otter and the CRJ will not be making it to the Xbox in the near future. Without going into detail, it's because the Xbox is in effect a sandbox, a secure platform. However, Microsoft Flight Simulator was now a very important part of Microsoft as a whole. And the Xbox platform specialists were looking at finding solutions. But don't expect them soon. Very little was covered on the VR front. And there were numerous calls for VR to get a little bit more focus. And you're committed at the next Q&A session to give it a separate slot. So issues can be addressed. Let's hope that happens. Well, that's all the main points. I hope you found this useful and interesting. Don't forget to subscribe for more like this. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you soon and bye for now.